So, I will speak for about one hour. Mm -hmm. Om Ajnana Timiranda Sanyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuhuvan Melitam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamakhyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamshya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sagitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam <coughs> Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaja Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitanamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna Ya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vishenamaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Shri Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Krupa Sindhu Vyayevacha Paditanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, <coughs> Hare Krishna. In the previous uh, many of our junior classes, we have been speaking on one very important theme. Uh, you all may be able to recollect it. Uh, we were talking about uh, attaining God through a long route which is Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and all that. Mm -hmm. Or attaining Him very easily through another way which is like a lift, mm -hmm. shortcut, which is Bhakti Yoga. Mm -hmm. So I was I was telling you, you remember? Sau Sonarki, Yek Loharki. The Bhakti Yoga path is like a one-stroke method. Mm -hmm. By one stroke, by accepting a Vaishnava Guru, adopting the path of Bhagavata Dharma, mm -hmm. which is also called Paro Dharma, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Sanatana Dharma. Mm -hmm. By adopting this royal path, royal road, uh, directly you can go back to Godhead. That is like touching the nose like this, straight. You don't have to uh, go through speculative Jnana Marg or uh, Ashtanga Yoga, which is uh, having a lot of tapasya, austerities and everything. Uh, Bhakti Yoga is simple, but it requires firm faith uh, in Krishna and Guru Parampara. And the path of Bhakti Yoga, chanting of the holy names and <coughs> Navvida Bhakti, hmm. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Archanam, Vandaram, Padasevanam, Dasyam, Sakyam. Atmani Vedana. Mm. These are the procedures given in Bhakti Yoga. So, we were talking about this in the last many classes. In one of the classes I was quoting to all of you, if you remember, the Dwadasha Mahajanas, huh? 12 Mahajans. So, I'll recollect that verse again now. Swayam bhu narada shambhu kumara kapilomanu prahalado janako bhishmo Balir Vayasakir Vayam. So, Yamaraj, who is also one of the uh, 12 Mahajanas, he says there are 12 authoritative uh, Mahajans or great devotees of Krishna. And if you want to know what is Bhagavad Dharma, you can go to any one of them. Uh, or you can learn from all of them. Uh, just like we say, this is an authorized college or authorized institute. Before you apply for your engineering, you want to check the authenticity 
or authority of the college. Hmm? So you don't get cheated, isn't it? Imagine if a college says, even if you only have a just pass in 12th standard, we will give you a, a seat in our college. And the only thing is, after you get engineering degree from our college, it will not be valid, if they say, what is the use. So if you want to go to an authorized institute, an authorized uh, teacher, just like we go to an uh, authorized doctor, so that he will be able to properly diagnose us and help us. Similarly, in Bhagavatam, these 12 personalities names are given. Uh, Swambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Kumara, Kapilo, Manu, Prahalada, Janako, Bhishma, Valir, uh, Bali, Vayasaki means uh, Shukadeva Goswami and Yamaraj. These 12 names. Now, what is so special about these 12 Mahajans? Why their names are given hmm, in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam? There is a reason. And there is a reason for it. You see, every one of these Mahajans, they surrendered to Krishna uh, completely, even in very difficult and awkward circumstances. They exhibited such Sharanagati, such kind of surrender. So, in today's session, I will briefly speak about a couple of uh, Mahajanas examples by hearing which you will, you will appreciate this point on how much these Mahajanas gave their heart to Krishna. See, somebody may give little money to Krishna. Uh, somebody may, uh, you know, give a small place in their house for making an altar, which is also good. But these Mahajanas had given their hearts, they had given their lives to Krishna, completely surrendered to Krishna. And uh, that is why we have to hear about the lives of great Mahajanas, like these twelve Mahajans. One time in uh, Vaikuntha, uh, four Kumaras came to the doorstep of Vaikuntha. They were actually impersonless. Uh, their father Brahma had taught them in their childhood about the Supreme God who is Lord Vishnu and how he looks like. But somehow, at that time, they were not very attracted to the form of Vishnu. But they were rather attracted to the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. So they became Jnanis. Uh, they were always absorbed in meditation on the Omkar, Pranava. And uh, as they were traveling uh, in the Brahma Jyoti, uh, they came to the doors of Vaikuntha, where Jaya and Vijay were standing. Uh, the Dwarapalakas of Vaikuntha. Naturally, the Dwarapalakas did not want to let the small children go in uh, because they were not eligible to go in and only pure devotees of Vishnu are allowed inside. So they stopped them at the door and the uh, four Kumaras became very angry on them uh, and they cursed them uh, saying that why are you having this kind of uh, ahambhav? Uh, my, my place and your place, ours and yours and that kind of difference, Pedabhav, you are seeing, uh, you two of you, what kind of people are you? Hmm? How can you stop us from entering inside? Because they, they wanted to enter inside out of curiosity uh, to see Lord Vishnu. Uh, so they also had a spiritual desire. And the, and the Dwarapalakas didn't allow them and they were also right because they were not supposed to allow anyone who is not qualified to go in. Hmm? Because Lord Vishnu will be pleased only if Shuddha Bhaktas, pure devotees, go inside. So they stopped. And the Dwarapalakas became very horrified uh, that the Brahmanas are upset and they are going to curse us. <coughs> so uh, they curse them that you will descend to the material world uh, and you will become Asuras. Uh, at the time, Lord Vishnu came to the uh, uh, entrance of the door of Vaikuntha in his very beautiful form, wearing a pitambar dhoti, wearing a vajanti mala on his neck, very uh, with a beautiful smile on his face, with his eyes like lotus petals, with his body like a bluish sapphire, uh, with his beautiful mukut studded with gems, and his makara kundal and everything. Uh, 
and his servants holding a beautiful uh, uh, umbrella bedecked with jewels and everything. So Lord Vishnu appeared in this beautiful form uh, near the door of Vaikuntha. And uh, Lord Vishnu looked at the Kumaras with merciful eyes and glancing them with mercy. And he also glanced at his two servants with great mercy. And Lord Vishnu did not become angry with anyone. In fact, by looking at him, uh, both the parties became completely uh, satisfied and pacified. And uh, there was a tulasi in the lotus feet of Vishnu uh, that carried the smell, uh, the wind carrying the smell of tulasi entered into the nostrils of the Kumaras. And by smelling it, it is said the Kumaras became pure devotees instantly. Tasya Ravinda Nayanasya Pada Ravinda Kinjal Kamishra Tulasi Makaranda Vayo Antar Gatas Pavivare Nachakara Tesham Sankshoba Makshara Jusham Avichitta Tanvo It is said Akshara Jusham means they were focused on impersonal Brahman. But now by smelling this Tulasi, they gave up that meditation on Omkar and they started meditating on the beautiful form of Vishnu. Uh, the Kumaras immediately went and fell at the feet of lotus feet of Vishnu. Uh, they said, my dear Lord, we are so foolish that we cursed your servants. But then before that, Lord Vishnu told them, my servants have not let you in. So they committed a mistake. And I being their master, I am ready to take the responsibility for the mistake of my servants. And if you wish, I can even lop off my arms, Lord Vishnu said. Because you are Brahmanas, you are great souls. And uh, I literally worship Brahmanas in my heart. So when Lord uh, Vishnu said it, the Kumara started crying practically. They said, my dear Lord, you are not at fault. Uh, your servants are not at fault. It is we who are at fault. That we behaved the way we, we did. Because if you wish, you can punish us, they said. And the two servants of Vishnu, their faces became pale, that they have been cursed to go to the material world. And now, Lord Vishnu smiled and told Kumaras, You are not at fault, and my two servants are not at fault. It was my plan that my two servants should go to the material world for a very special pastime. That was indeed my desire, Lord Vishnu said. Uh, and the two servants were amazed. Uh, why did the Lord want us to go to the material world? Uh, you see, Lord is a person, as much as you and I are a person. We have likes, similarly Lord also has likes. Uh, like for example, somebody may ask why Vishnu is travelling on a Garuda? Uh, why can't he travel on a bull? Or why can't he travel on a swan? <clears throat> because he likes Garuda. Garuda is his favorite devotee, so he travels on Garuda. Uh, similarly, people ask, why does Krishna play a flute? Why not a guitar? But Krishna likes flute. Uh, similarly, Krishna likes peacock feather to wear it on his head. Uh, and similarly, Krishna loves cows. So, Lord also has likes uh, because he is a person. Similarly, Vishnu, being the Supreme Person, Supreme Lord, He also has likes and one of His likes is to enjoy uh, Viriras. Viriras means to have a stunt, uh, to have a stunt or a fight with anyone. Uh, you see, there are different type of rasas that we all enjoy. Mm. Like when we see a movie, sometimes in a comedy movie we have a great laughter. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's a tragedy movie, there is a lot of sorrow and sobbing. Uh. <coughs> Similarly, Every movie has a component of stunt, hmm, at a, a terrible fight. Hmm. And, there, and there are people who go to the movie especially to see that scene, hmm, because they consider it very favorite. Hmm. So, all of you ask yourself, hmm, how many of you like to see the stunt scene? Hmm, especially when the villain is trying to catch the heroine and take her away. Uh, and she's screaming and wailing and suddenly the hero appears from nowhere, on the top of a hill. And there is a big fight between the hero and the villain. 
terrible fight. Sometimes it appears that the villain is defeating the hero. Huh? And the hero is falling off the cliff, only his hands are holding on to the cliff and the villain is crushing his hands with his boots. Huh? But then you know what happens. Huh? The hero comes up again. Huh? And then uh, uh, finally the villain is defeated. So, ev every one of us, we would watch such a scene and by sitting at the edge of our seats. Hmm. So, we love the stunt scenes. Similarly, Lord also likes stunt. Because Lord has a liking for stunt scene, we also have a liking for the same. You see? Because we are minute samples of Krishna. Hmm. We are part and parcel of the Lord. So, it is said in the scriptures that when Lord wants to do stand, there is no one who is equal to him, who can fight with him. In Vaikuntha, if the Lord says, I want to fight with some of you, please come, do you think anybody will fight? Huh? Even what to speak of the Lord, even with our superiors, we may, we may not want to fight. Huh? Imagine if, uh, if your Guru tells you that, come, let's, let's both have Kushti, huh? fight. Will you be able to fight with him? Huh? You only can fall at his feet and put your head at his feet. Hmm? You can never think of fighting with him. Hmm? Similarly, when Vishnu says, I want to fight now, come. At the most, you may take a lotus flower and throw on him. Hmm? You cannot fight with him. So that is why Lord Vishnu likes to bring his devotees to this material world, where when they forget who Vishnu is, hmm? who Lord is, then they can fight with him. Hmm? And when they fight with him, the Lord enjoys. And how is his enjoyment like? Hmm? It is something like a king appointing a wrestler hmm, to have some maluda or kushti with him, you see. Sometimes a king appoints a wrestler and monthly he pays him some 10-20 thousand rupees uh, salary. And in a very big uh, assembly, all the queens and ministers and praja, they are all sitting in a stadium in the middle. The king is fighting with the fellow. Hmm? They both are fighting. And, punching one another, rolling on the ground, pulling the leg, pulling the hair, they are fighting. Hmm? That wrestler is not king's enemy. Hmm? And nor is a king wrestler's enemy. Hmm? King is actually deriving great delight, <laughs> great fun in doing that. Uh, the, I, I, I was remembering, when I was a small boy, sometimes my father would tell me, uh, he would lie on the ground and he would tell me, you just walk over my body. Hmm? You know, from the, he will show the side of his body and I will walk from his leg to the shoulder and shoulder to leg and the side of his body. You know? So sometimes the neighbor would come, uh, one neighboring man, he would peep out of the window and he would see me walking on the body of my father. He would shout at me, hey, what are you doing? It will pay for your father. And how can you do like this? So I would laugh and my father would laugh also because my father knows he has only ordered me to do this. You know? And I am doing it for his pleasure. And he is enjoying it, you see. Similarly, the king has appointed wrestlers with whom he fights. And the wrestler is not uh, eager to kill the king. Rather, the wrestler actually is punching the king to give pleasure to the king, you see. Uh, generally, you may think, you know, giving pleasure means you give a gulab jamun uh, or you, you speak sweet words. That is something giving pleasure. But you can also punch and give pleasure and uh, inferior us. Uh, and Lord wants to experience that. That is why uh, Lord told uh, his two servants, My dear two servants, you have a choice. Either for seven lifetimes you become devotees in the material world, or three lifetimes you become demons. Now you decide. Hmm. In, in any case, you have to go to the material world for some period of time. And also Lord reminded them, there is something pending in your account even before. Do you remember? Uh, once uh, Lakshmi came to the Vaikuntha, uh, from, when she came from outside to the doors of Vaikuntha, again Jaya Vijay stopped her. Uh, and she asked, how dare you stop me? I am Lord's consort. Uh, so they said, no, no, Lord is now resting now. He has told, don't allow anyone to disturb me. Uh, so we cannot let you go. And she became very angry. Uh, you are telling about Lord, whose Lord is he? She asked. They said, he's our Lord, they said. Hmm? Oh, is it your Lord? He's not your Lord, he's my Lord, she said. <coughs> and when, when, when they both had an argument, she said, come, let's go and ask uh, whether he is my Lord or your Lord. Hmm? So they both uh, 
both of them went and Lord Vishnu immediately got up and he sat in his uh, serpent bed and he asked, Oh, my dear, my dear Lakshmi, you, there seems to be some fight that has ensued between both of you. What happened? Jai Vijay, what happened? The Lord asked. So Lakshmi said, they are claiming that you are their Lord, not mine. And now you tell me, you are whose Lord? So Lord looked at Jai Vijay. And he looked at Lakshmi and uh, what answer could he give them? He just gave a smile. He smiled in such a beautiful way that both of them forgot the question <laughs> completely. But Lakshmi told the Dwarapalakas, Jai Vijay, that because you behaved with, with your mother, I am like your mother. You dealt with me like this. So I want to give you a punishment by sending you to the material world for some time. And then you you will come back. You will go to the material world once and you will come back. So immediately both of them realized uh, uh, how great grievous mistake they committed. And this was a old history that happened before, but they never went to the material world. Now Lord Vishnu reminded them, do you remember? You still have that in your account pending. So they both remembered it. Now, <coughs> Jai Vijay, both of them thought, it will be better to be devotee for seven lifetimes because we can remember Lord Vishnu always and we can come back after that. Because if you remember Lord Vishnu, you can even remain in material world for millions of years. Because remembering Him means being with Him. And then they thought at the same time, Lord Vishnu wants to fight with us. As a devotee, we cannot fight. And if He wants pleasure, we have to become demons to give Him pleasure. And they thought, we don't mind becoming demons hmm, for three lifetimes. At the same time, we can also come back to Vaikuntha very quickly. Hmm. We can finish off three lifetimes and come back. So they told Lord Vishnu, we are ready hmm, to accept to become uh, demons for three lifetimes. And then they are the ones, when they fell uh, from the Vaikuntha, when they came, they became Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. Hmm. And later they became Shishupal and Dandavakra. Uh, later they became Ravana and Kumbhakarana. In this way, Lord enjoys uh, various by uh, engaging in mock fighting with his own devotees, you see. Because Lord is Rasa Vigraha. He enjoys Rasa, different type of Rasa. There are five primary Rasas, you know. Shantaras, Dasaras, Sakiras, Vatsalaras, Madhuriras. Similarly, there are uh, another seven secondary Rasas like Vibhatsaras, Bhiriras, uh, different type of rasas. Lord enjoys different type of rasas, you see. Now, why I told you these things now, I'll come to the point. Uh, in India, uh, if you ask people uh, about Bhishma, most people, they have very little knowledge about Bhishma. If you ask, uh, ask people, why did Bhishma fight on the side of Kauravas? Why did he not fight on the side of Pandavas? Because everybody knows uh, Bhima, Bhishma uh, loved the Pandava children right from their young age because they were fatherless children. And they were in the jungle, they came and they were virtuous, they were pure-hearted. Uh, he always liked them. Mm. So then why did Bhishma not side with Pandavas? Most people will give you the answer because he had taken a vow that whoever is ruling party, I will be with them. This is one reason in India people will give you, commonly known. And some other people will give another reason. When Bhishma was lying in the arrow bed, at that time, uh, Pandavas came to meet him along with Krishna. And Krishna told Yudhishthira Maharaj, please inquire from Bhishma Pitama about the path of Dharma, Raja Dharma, Stri Dharma, Kula Dharma, Sanatana Dharma. Huh? Uh, Bhagavata Dharma, all these dharmas you inquire. And this uh, was about to begin that inquiry and somebody giggled. <laughs> somebody laughed. And uh, Bhishma opened his eyes and said, Who is that laughing? Is it Draupadi? He asked. Yes, it was Draupadi who laughed. And she didn't say a word. And then Bhishma Pitama was a very mature and advanced soul. He said, Oh Draupadi, I know why you are laughing. 
you may be thinking this fellow is such a cruel person uh, he fought on the side of kauravas against the pandavas and all these years he was siding with adharma and now what kind of uh, lecture can he give on dharma so he may be laughing at me but let me tell you draupadi uh, my body was filled with the blood uh, that is produced from the salt that i ate from the hands of duryodhana so i had become completely impure so impure blood was flowing in my body so i had no qualification to speak on dharma but the arrows of partha arjuna they pierced my body and has released all that blood now i have become purified now and probably that is why he just is coming and asking me about dharma he said so some people give this reason you see actually you know bhishma fought on the side of kauravas uh, because you know he had eaten the salt of duryodhana having eaten the salt of duryodhana how can he say no to him you know he was obliged to fight on his side some people say like that and there are other people in india who say actually you know he was fighting on kauravas side because he was in a very respectable position he had a great prestige he had a great status and he was a grandfather they gave him elevated seat in the court by the side of dhritarashtra he was like a king he was like a great king. everybody saluted him and he was attached to his seat in a post he could not give up some people say like that and none of this is true in fact the explanation is given in mahabharata and shrimad bhagavatam the only reason bhishma fought on the side of kauravas was to please krishna Hmm. you asked told you about the veer ras lord wants to enjoy veer ras so lord told bishma my dear bishma you fight on other side i will fight on this side we both will enjoy the fighting hmm. yeah he did that hmm. like you read one of the days uh, uh, when duryodhana had insulted bishma very severely uh, saying that uh, you are not uh, exerting yourself fully uh, i think my dear grandfather you have a soft corner for the pandavas i think you have made up your mind simply to be not out in the fight and go on with the fight and then allow the pandavas to win over win over me i think you are making hatching a plot to destroy our army better that you get down and give the place for karna to fight like that one day duryodhana said hearing this bhishma became very insulted and bhishma said duryodhana never think that i am not exerting myself fully uh, even though all of us are fighting very valiantly in the battle it is very difficult to destroy the pandavas because they are all virtuous and they are headed by father of virtue who is krishna a very difficult to defeat but still because he has spoken in this way today uh, he took out five silver arrows and placing them on a velvet cloth he meditated and said with these five arrows i will destroy all the five pandavas tomorrow and uh, duryodhana was delighted he thought i twisted his false ego a little bit and now he is ready to kill all the five pandavas then the battle be over tomorrow he was very happy uh, and then duryodhana said okay give me those five arrows i'll keep with me uh, and tomorrow before you go for the battle i'll give you back he said and then bhishma said see no one can stop me um, from doing what i said but there is only one possibility if krishna breaks his vow and picks up a weapon then only i will not be able to fulfill my promise otherwise personally i will never give up my promise i i take this vow on my brahmacharya like that he said vishnu pitama so duryodhana was very satisfied but you know the story what happened krishna on the other side smelled it immediately he told arjuna to go and fetch those five arrows and arjuna came that's a long story how arjuna took back the five arrows from duryodhana and went away and next day in the battle bhishma was fighting so vigorously volleys of arrows were shot on arjuna so vigorously arjuna could not even see what's happening around so many arrows were coming on him the chariot was broken the horses were knocked down arjuna was off from his chariot 
and Krishna saw Bhishma is so vigorous today. Huh? It appeared to Krishna that you know Arjuna is going to be defeated. Huh? Arjuna may be even killed. Huh? Now Krishna jumped off from his chariot huh? and he picked up a wheel of a chariot in his hand and lifting it above his head, he ran towards uh, Bhishma as if a lion is going to charge against an elephant. Hmm. You see, this is a very beautiful picture you might have seen. Hmm. Arjuna is catching his feet and telling, My dear Krishna, you are not supposed to lift any weapon. Hmm. Uh, please do not break the vow that you have taken. Hmm. Krishna says, Hell with my vow! Hmm. Because I have to protect you at any cost. For me, protecting you uh, from being killed is more important than my morality. Uh, it is more important than my reputation and good name. Huh? I don't care for anybody. Let the world say whatever they want, Arjuna. Now I want to save your life. And he picked up and the Lord started running. You see, when Vishnu Pitama saw this beautiful sight, huh? he saw there were perspiration on Krishna's forehead. Hmm? And there was, his eyes were anxiety ridden uh, with the desire to protect uh, um, Arjuna. And the top cloth, Angavastara, was flow, flow, flowing off uh, and falling on the ground. Uh, and Arjuna was catching the feet of Krishna. And Krishna lifting this wheel. This sight was most appreciated by Bhishma. Uh, because Bhishma also loves, enjoys Virya he's a Chatriya. Uh, he enjoyed seeing the Lord in this beautiful form. Uh, and Bhishma put all his weapons down and he showed his hand like this and said, My dear Lord, you can kill me if you wish. Uh, uh, I have surrendered to you now. He surrendered. By the time everybody blew their conscience and the war came to an end that day. Mm-hmm. Now you see, do you think really Krishna wanted to kill Bhishma? If he wanted to kill Bhishma, he could have taken his Varshan Chakra from his hand and killed him, just as he did with uh, Shishupal. <laughs> Isn't it? Here the Lord took the, took the wheel of the chariot. Nobody in this world, you will hear in any history, that somebody took a wheel of a chariot and killed somebody. Mm-hmm. It is only a gesture of his love hmm, for Bhishma Pitama. Hmm. So, later on, <coughs> when Bhishma was lying in the arrow bed, hmm, uh, Bhishma asked Lord Krishna, hmm, My dear Lord Krishna, hmm, I have some very important questions to ask you before I quit my body. Can I ask them? Krishna said, Yes, why not? Is there any sambandha between you and truth? He asked him a question. And Krishna said, You are asking any relationship between me and truth? I am the truth. In fact, I, am, I follow the path of uh, spotless truth. Krishna said. Uh, and then Bhishma asked, uh, Should uh, all the Janasadharan also follow the path of truth? And Krishna said, Yes. Every person in this world should follow the path of truth. Uh, even the common people. And what to speak of my devotees hmm. and those who are uh, uh, self-realized souls, huh? they, they will lay down their life for the sake of truth. <clears throat> and as far as I am concerned, I am the ultimate truth and I stand by truth always. I never resort to any falsehood, <clears throat> Krishna said. Now Bhishma smiled and said, Yes, my dear Lord, now Based on what you spoke just now, I have a question for you. If you say you are the truth, there is no falsity in you, then why did you break your vow in the battle of Kurukshetra? I wanted to ask you this question. You said you will never lift the weapon, but I saw you lifting the weapon and coming, running towards me. Where did your vow go? So, I thought you have broken, you have, you have broken your promise, probably because you wanted to protect your favorite devotee, Arjuna. And uh, you loved Arjuna so much from your heart, uh, you didn't mind ge- earning a bad name by breaking your vow. Am I right? He asked Bhishma. Krishna smiled and said, That's not the total truth. That is only part of the truth. But I will tell you the total truth. He said, Bhishma, I know very well. You took a vow that with these five arrows tomorrow I will kill the Pandavas. And the only way I may not be able to kill Pandavas is if Krishna breaks his vow. So I knew it. And to fulfill your statement, since you are my pure devotee, 
to fulfill your statement, I broke my vow. I preferred to become subordinate to my devotee who, like yourself. Huh? Because that it gives me great joy to become subordinate to my devotee's love. Huh? When he said it, Vishnu Pitama um, burst into tears. He cried torrents of tears. Huh? And he said, my dear Lord, who can understand your heart? Huh? Simultaneously you accomplish hundreds of goals. Huh? You wanted to protect your devotee Arjuna. You wanted to uh, save my words and save my vow. And for doing all these things, you are willing to forego your good reputation and good name. Uh, who can be such an intimate, loving friend in this world for anyone? Uh, and Bhishma said, I have only one desire. Um, at the time of me passing away, let me see this beautiful form of yours um, in front of my eyes. And I am waiting to quit my body in your presence, remembering you in my heart. In this way, Bhishma, uh, on the Sankranti day, which appears in January, hmm? he had a Chamrityo. He left his body, seeing Lord Krishna in front of him. And he attained Vaikuntha again. Hmm? You see, that is why Bhishma is included as one of the Mahajanas. Hmm? Why? Because he simply fought on the side of Kauravas. What for? To please Krishna. Now, let me ask all of you. Is there anyone here who will agree to fight on the side of um, Kauravas? Uh, to please Krishna. Say, I, 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 remember, I was remembering one thing in my class. There was one boy who had a very fat body and a broad face. And many boys uh, wanted a nice role for Ravana hmm, in one of the dramas. So they requested this boy, hey, you will be fitting very well. Your moustache is also very nice. You have a Bhagat Singh type of big moustache. <laughs> so you become Ravana. He flatly refused. He said, no, 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 either allow me to become Ram or I will not do any role. No, he was telling. Why? Because nobody wants to become unpopular in this world. Hmm? Because people are afraid. After the drama is over, all friends will keep teasing him, hey, Ravana Agaya, Ravana Agaya, everybody will say, you know. So, in the same manner, we never want to take negative roles in our lives. But Bhishma Pitama is willing to take a negative role. You know? If that's what will please Krishna, you see. This is the meaning of Mahajan. A Mahajan doesn't care for his reputation. A Mahajan doesn't think what is what is in it for me. What can I gain out of it? He only thinks one thing. How to please Krishna. Whatever will please him, I'm ready to do. This is Mahajan. So, uh, it is very important for us to learn about each of these Mahajanas you know, uh, by studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Mahabharata, Ramayana and this kind of literatures. And by studying the lives of Mahajans and seeing how they behaved with the Lord and how Lord behaved with them and what is that nature you know, and what is Lord's nature and how there is an intimate and uh, thick loving relationship between them. Uh, these are very important for us to know because the Lord comes in various avatars, you see. For example, uh, Lord comes as Matsya avatar, uh, comes as Kurma avatar, comes as Narsinga avatar. Uh, even Kunti Manani is saying this. She is saying, uh, Janma karma cha vishwatman ajasya akar turatmanah teriyang nara rishishayadasu tadatyanta vidambanam. She is telling, my dear Lord, you are coming as teriyang, uh, you are coming as beasts. Uh, like animals, like uh, you are coming like half man, half lion, Narsimha, uh, is it? You are coming as uh, Varaha uh, or wild boar. Uh, you are coming like a transcendental boar. Uh, yeah. Similarly, you come as aquatics, like uh, Matsya avatar, uh, Kurma avatar. It's also aquatic, isn't it? Sometimes you come as Naranarayan Rishi. Uh, sometimes you are appearing like Krishna and Ram, like this, in different forms. But although you appear in all these different forms, it's very important to know that your body is completely Satchidananda, pure. Huh? It is not made of flesh and bones like our bodies are made, you see. Your body is completely pure. Huh? So, just like sometimes, uh, once uh, Prabhupada told the story, how uh, a man was passing by a house and the children were talking amongst themselves in the house, you know, I want a tiger. I want a deer, I want a sparrow. 
somebody said i want a lion and the man was wondering what kind of house is this are these children all monsters eating all these dangerous creatures so he peeped through the window and there he saw the children were eating different uh, uh, biscuits which were of different shapes you see some, bis- uh, some biscuits were like lion shaped biscuits some were like a tiger shaped biscuits elephant shaped biscuit sparrow shaped biscuit peacock shaped biscuits but all biscuits are biscuits although they look like different different shapes and forms uh, they are all made of the same atta similarly all the forms like uh, matsya avatar kurma avatar narsingha avatar varaha avatar all these avatars their, their bodies are uh, divyam krishna says janma karma chame divyam he says transcendental uh, now although lord appears in various forms you know it's one god but appearing in different different forms uh, will people not be confused mm-hmm. you know lord is coming in different forms and is teaching also different things like dattatreya is coming and teaching detachment uh, how to detach oneself from this world and the same lord comes as buddha and he is teaching ahimsa paramo dharma uh, ahimsa is the ultimate dharma so if god comes in different different times and teaching different different uh, aspects of dharma will people not be confused and that too lord comes in different forms also he is not coming in the same form every time we may have this question in bhagavatam it is said these different different forms in which he comes they come with some mission and that mission is sadharana hetu it is said sadharana hetu means uh, the they many incarnations of the lord come to give some uh, short term lessons like ahimsa paramo dharma that is not the ultimate teaching but all the avataras uh, they whatever they may be teaching but ultimately they uh, they indicate to the uh, one prime goal of uh, all religious uh, principles which is to awaken love for god like buddha came hmm? when all his followers developed love for buddha buddham sharanam gachami and buddha tricked them uh, to develop love for him hmm? and uh, take them back to his abode hmm? and eventually Uh, he will elevate them from the platform of nirvana to the platform of prema uh, pure love uh, any form in which lord comes uh, uh, like you know the different avataras matsya avatar he has beautiful eyes like lotus petals although he is a matsya similarly varaha he is not like a ordinary pig or a boar uh, he is a divine boar because his eyes were also like lotus petals um, when lord uh, appeared as boar Uh, he came from the nose of brahma uh, can you imagine is there anything good that comes from anyone's nose <laughs> any time and but he came not only from some woman's nose he came from a man's nose you see uh, he came from brahma's nose he came very small and then he came then he gradually flew in the sky became thumb size he became fist size he became this much he became elephant size then he became huge like a mountain uh, and as he flew in the sky even brahma and other devatas couldn't understand who he is and and then lord flew in the sky with his hooves tearing the clouds and slashing his tail also there were hairs on the back of his body he also moved the hairs like this and when those waters were sprinkled on brahma and devatas and all the sages immediately they felt a smell like you know rose rose scented waters huh? fragrant smell immediately they all folded the palms sahasra shir sa purushah sahasra akshas sahasra pat sabhomim vishvato vritvan atyatishtat dashangulam purusha evedagum sarvam yad bhutam yat cha bhavyam Odam Rathat Pash Like that they started reciting Wonderful Pusha Sukta Prayas Why? Because that those waters that touched their heads and bodies enlightened them That this is the same Krishna who has come in the form of a wild boar Prahalat Sa Narasimha He understood It's the same Krishna who has come as a half man, half lion form huh? Yeah Sometimes uh, as a brother you may wear a a mask of a lion huh? and you may come into the room of your sister <laughs> as if you frighten your sister 
she may get frightened initially. Yeah? So devotees also got frightened when they saw Narasimha Dev. Yeah? But then when you remove your mask, then your sister knows who you are. Yeah? Isn't it? Similarly, there's a song called the Shavatara Stotram, written by Jayadeva Goswami. He says, Keshava Dritta Narahari Rupa Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare So every one of the avatars ends with Keshava Dritta. Lord Keshava or Krishna only comes as Shukara Rupa or Vamana Rupa or Narahari Rupa. Same Keshava only. Who is Keshava? Keshava means one who has beautiful long hair, eh? one who's have, who has curly locks of hair, Krishna. Eh? So, in this way we have to know all these avatars are expansions of Krishna and they come for sadharana hetu. But when Krishna himself comes, Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam, it is said, which means the original person is Krishna. Eh? And he comes, he comes, comes to give pure love of God. That he comes to teach. That is called Prema Payukta. It is said in the Bhagavatam. Hmm? So, although many avatars may come, uh, they teach many, many lessons, we should know the ultimate goal of life is to develop love for Krishna. Hmm? So, Vishnu Pitamaha also developed love for Krishna when he was quitting his body. So, he naturally attained Vaikuntha, you see. In this way, every Mahajan, they come to teach us how to uh, uh, how to understand this essential point in life, which is love of God. You see, the Vedas are compared to a tree. Uh, Nigama, uh, they are called as Nigama Kalpataror. Uh, they are called as a uh, tree, uh, Veda, Veda tree. But can you bite the bark of a tree? Uh, is it tasty? Uh, similarly, when you read the Vedas, you know, the knowledge uh, of Jnana or Karma or Yoga, it is like the bark of a tree or a branch of a tree or a flower of a tree. But the ripened fruit, like the mango uh, in a tree, that is Srimad Bhagavatam, which teaches the Pancham Purushartha. After Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha comes the Shuddha Bhakti. Hmm? And Shuddha Bhakti means Shuddha Prem. Uh, that is taught in Srimad Bhagavatam. So, and the Bhagavatam quotes examples of Mahajanas. The Bhishma uh, past time I told you now, this is given in Srimad Bhagavatam elaborately. How the Lord loves his devotee Bhishma. How Bhishma loved Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. In this way, when we carefully hear the lives of Mahajanas and study their nature, their behavior, how they have a singular focus on loving Krishna and pleasing him and serving him, and we can also awaken love for Krishna. So we will conclude with this today. In the next class, I will speak about Vamana Dev. Uh, and Bali Maharaja, hmm? uh, which is also very important for us to know how um, one should surrender to the Lord, uh, giving up one's uh, temporary material proprietorship. Hmm? So that we will discuss in another class. Hmm? The purpose of uh, the Bhagavatam explaining these lives of Mahajanas hmm, is to teach us that yes, there are many dharmas to follow in this world. There is Kola Dharma, there is Tri Dharma, there is uh, 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 Desha Dharma, huh? there is Devata, Puja Dharma. Huh? Many, many types of dharmas are there in this world. But amongst all dharmas, Lord Krishna said, Sarva Dharma and Parityajya, Maam, Yekam, Sharanam, Braja. He said, You rise above all the chota mota petty dharmas, Krishna says, surrender to me. Huh? In love, huh? when you surrender to Krishna completely, huh? And that is actually the ultimate goal of life. This is taught both in the end of Bhagavad Gita and in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. And after giving this lesson, Bhagavatam gives many, many examples. After teaching this, in the very beginning, where Bhagavad Gita ends, the Srimad Bhagavatam begins there. And by hearing these wonderful pastimes, we will be able to strike a personal understanding of Vishnu and Krishna. We'll be able to develop a personal respect and love for the Supreme Lord because the Lord doesn't want you to just put Him on the altar and bow down to Him and worship Him uh, with great reverence. But the Lord wants to interact with us by entering into our hearts and lives uh, and be a part of it just like we are interacting with one another at home with our mother and father and brother and sister and everybody. 
The Lord also comes into the lives of his devotees and he enjoys such reciprocation with his devotees and quite often becoming subordinate to his devotees. This is Bhagavata Dharma which teaches the nature and characteristics of Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada, when he went to the West, uh, he very beautifully taught this. That is why you find in America uh, and London and I mean, Europe and you know Germany and Australia and all these countries, you know, Prabhupada very expertly brought out the essential truth of the scriptures and presented to the people. This is called Saragrahi. See, there is a difference between Saragrahi and Bharavahi. Bharavahi means like a donkey. Donkey may carry a lot of load of scriptures on its back, but it cannot benefit from them. Similarly, somebody who reads a lot of books, Vedas, I am a Chaturvedi, I am a Dhuvedi, Trivedi, is like a Bharavahi. They may be very learned in Sanskrit and all, but they may not know the essential truth of the religion. But Saragrahi means one who comes to the straight to the point. And the point is to love and surrender to Krishna. And Prabhupada taught it. And the people in the West, they captured it. And they also understood, actually, this is the same truth in all religions. All religions are ultimately focusing on this principle of love of God. But in Christianity and Islam and other religions, they don't elaborately explain about the nature of God and His dealings with His devotees. Like uh, how Krishna deals with his cows and calves, how Krishna deals with his gopis uh, and gopas and parents. And this much details are not given in many religions. Uh, that is why people even in the West could capture this understanding. And people have become genuine practitioners of love of God, you see. This is Prabhupada's contribution to the uh, people in the modern age. Uh, you can be an uh, engineer, you can be a doctor, you can be a housewife can be an army officer, he may be anybody, he may be a child, he may be a boy, he may be a girl, irrespective of gender, irrespective of education, jati dan vidyabal nakare upeksha, nakare upeksha, which means you don't need a uncha jati janam, you don't need birth in a high family, you don't need to be wealthy, you don't need to be educated, all you need is, you should be willing to hear this wonderful pastimes in Srimad Bhagavatam. And chant Hare Krishna sincerely, genuinely, uh, praying to Krishna to uh, help us revive our connection with Him. And the love of God will awaken in our hearts. And this is the uh, mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Lord Chaitanya taught it and uh, down in the line Srila Prabhupada uh, followed this path of, uh, wonderful path of the chanting of the holy name and <coughs> speaking of the glories of the Lord directly hmm, without you know talking on peripheral details of religion Prabhupada gave the core uh, principle of religion which is to love God so uh, today we could discuss about one Mahajan hmm. so one more Mahajan we will discuss in the next class thank you Srila Prabhupada ki Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki Jai Hare Krishna